I've had various blink cameras stationed around my house for years now as the brand to me is affordable and reliable. My wife has been asking me to install a camera facing our driveway for quite some time now, and I finally pulled the trigger on a package deal from Amazon that includes the, as of purchase date, uh, the new floodlight, a third gen outdoor cam, and the Sync Module 2 for $90. The price point and my familiarity with Blink were the deciding factors to the purchase, but after months of the setup, is it actually a good product regardless of the price tag? Alright, let me preface this review by listing out other prominent players in the flight light camera market and how much they currently cost to buy. The Nest setup from Google has an MSRP of $280 with Ring slotting into the field slightly cheaper at $200 with their model. Our Blink camera here has an MSRP of $140, but because Amazon is Amazon, it does seem to go on sale often, which is how we got it. The cheapest flight light from a mainstream name that I found is from Wise, which undercuts everyone with an MSRP of $85. I don't know if you trust Wise right now with everything going on with them. So with that out of the way, I think it's pretty self-explanatory why I pulled the trigger on the Blink setup when it was down to only $90. While the feature set between all of these competitors vary depending on the price, I found the overall offering from Blink to be substantial enough to not pay an extra $100 for a Ring or a Nest. So how exactly does the Blink Floodlight work? Think of this as three separate products that combine together to operate one function. You can actually buy them individually if you need to. The main component is the visual aspect, which utilizes a third generation outdoor Blink camera. You can buy a standalone Blink camera and it'll be exactly the same as the one I have in this package. The second component is the wireless floodlight module. This has two individual squirt lights flanking to the left and the right of the camera. They're connected together by a center compartment that houses slots for four D-cell batteries, which will need to be replaced over time. On the battery compartment is a ball mount, which the outdoor Blink camera latches onto. There's a bunch of set of videos already from Blink that are actually pretty good that you can watch. When assembled together, the entire setup will slide into a wall mount with an insert layout that matches up with the back of the battery compartment. It's quite easy to pull the floodlight on and off from its location thanks to this wall mount design. That's important because you'll be needing to do this once in a while to replace the batteries. Seeing as both the outdoor blink camera and the floodlight are truly wireless, you'll need to replace the D-cell batteries for the floodlight and the two AA batteries for the blink camera periodically. I haven't had them long enough to need to do that yet or else this review will be more than a year down the line, but ideally it should happen after about a year or more. They estimate two years actually. The third part of this equation is a small square receiver called the Sync Module 2. As the name suggests, this is a refresh model of what can be considered the brains of the operation. Plugging this into an outlet will allow your smart devices to communicate with the outdoor blank camera through Wi-Fi connection. There's also a USB-A port that accepts thumb drives to store video captures based on your settings. May I also add that this is all free after purchase of the product. There isn't a need to pay for cloud services to save or view older footage as Blink allows you to actually save all of the important information through the Sync module too. That's also another selling point that made the Blink setup attractive to me because um, we've kind of moved to this system where you have to subscribe to everything. I have a Ring subscription and the Ring doorbell adding another camera to view the timeline makes it pretty pricey depending on how big your home is and how many uh, cameras you have for your coverage. The same applies for Nest and their cameras, which I've actually opted to skip subscribing for monitoring on my Nest Secure system. So that's a lot of subscriptions you have to get eventually. As a longtime Blink camera owner, I'm quite well versed with their smartphone app. Not much has changed in functionality over the years, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing. As with the other Blink cameras, 
a screenshot serves as a thumbnail to represent the location the device is pointing at, so you have a visual of what camera it is. A roll of icons can be toggled on the bottom. The video button takes you to a live view of the camera, while the photo button actually takes a new screen cap that replaces the current thumbnail. The added feature on this outdoor camera is the ability to toggle the floodlight on and off. Keep in mind that toggling the light from this main menu does not actually update that thumbnail image as it is in a live view there. You can do the same action in the actual live view mode to see the lights turn on and off via your input. In the live view mode, you have the ability to talk with your phone's microphone, which will push through to the camera. You can also mute the audio you're receiving from the camera if you just want to see your image without hearing all the outside noise. There's also a toggle that says save and discard. Toggling it to save will tell the system to save the current video onto your sync module 2 and it will appear on the app for you to view at any time. Arming the camera will enable motion detection which can be tweaked for sensitivity based on, on, on the user's liking. You can even modify specific quadrants to deactivate so that the motion doesn't trigger recording from those spots. Motion detection also triggers the floodlight to automatically turn on if you so choose. However, don't make the same mistake I did and install it next to a constant source of light. It won't work because the environment must be as dark as possible for the floodlight to activate. Regardless of my blender, I do at least have a backup light in case my lamp ever impromptu dies. It's also beneficial to actually have an option to manually make my driveway even brighter than it currently is from anywhere in the world, wherever I am, using this floodlight. So that's a benefit to have. The footage picked up by the outdoor cam is in a sharp full HD resolution. Whatever motion the subjects in the frame are enacting, it will be captured at up to 30 frames per second. So 1080p at 30 frames per second. After nightfall, the sensor will automatically change the feet into infrared mode. As someone who works professionally with IR sensors, my judgment here might be a little skewed. In my view, I see the IR as acceptable for a lower end consumer product, and there's nothing wrong with that. The field of view is also not as wide as some of the competitors, but once again, I do find it acceptable enough based on strategic placements of the camera. Mine covers more than enough ground for my mini driveway. Blake cameras are quite basic, and that attributes to their affordability. That isn't without its downside though. Every blink camera will flash a prompt after 30 seconds of live viewing. If you don't hit that button, the live feed will cease. Seeing as most blink cameras are operated by battery, this methodology was probably instilled to prolong battery life as long as possible. Curiously, even blink cameras that are plunked into a wall outlet cannot sustain um, continuous live viewing without prompt. It's kind of weird that, that that's how it works. I guess it's become a blink way of life. <laughs> Another minor detractor is how long the app takes to load the video feed. I found Ring and Nest to be quite faster in bringing up a live feed from the app. The video delay also seems slightly longer than the more expensive rivals that I just talked about. None of these are deal breakers, of course, as I can absolutely live with the minor inconveniences, especially at that $90 bargain rate. Overall, like all of the other Blink products I own, I'm quite satisfied with what I received in light of what I paid to acquire the entire setup. While I have seen more features and better image quality from competing brands through homes of friends that I have, I do think Blink supplies buyers with superb value. I really don't see much additional tech required for my current needs of a flight like camera that Blink hasn't already covered, at least in some way. The rest is subjective, as I can make arguments as to why you'd want a wire camera over a battery-powered one, just as I can also make the same argument that a battery-powered camera could be better than a solar-powered module. There's no right or wrong answer. With smart home planning, everything really depends on the location and type of usage the homeowner decides is best for that specific spot you're going to put whatever you're going to put. If you're looking for a low-cost, easy-to-set-up floodlight camera, I actually don't think you can go wrong with Blink. You know what you should do? Hit that subscribe button because by the time this video is out, something better is probably going to come out. So you're going to have to come back to our channel and watch the review of something better anyway. So be sure to check that video out in the future and I'll see you in that video.